So these three type of things in particular can be things that are like winds that are contrary to us. I think of how in Matthew, ladies, in the seventh chapter, verse 25 and 27, we'll look at quickly, and we see that the, the righteous, the godly, they are not exempt from contrary winds. All right, it says, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. Verse 27 says, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great and complete was the fall of it. That was the one that was built on the sand. You see, the Lord right there is showing us that even though you're built upon the rock, which is Christ Jesus, is the foundation of your life and your faith and your future and your eternity, even though you're on the rock, that does not mean the winds will not come. Yes, the winds still came, Jesus said, and they blew and they beat against this house that was on the rock. But what happened? It stood. It stood. It lasted. By God, it lasted. And that's the way you will be as a child of God. If your life is established on Jesus Christ and his promise of his word, you will find, yes, storms will come and the winds will beat against you, but you will not be demolished. You will not be demolished. You may be humbled sometimes, but maybe you need it, as I've been humbled at times because I needed it for God to condition me and prepare me more to be better suited to, to do what he asked me to do. But you will not be destroyed because you've got that rock foundation beneath you, but the winds will still come. And then you take the individual who is not built and founded with Christ as the foundation of their life or the word of God as the foundation of their life upon which they stand. The same thing, winds come, winds blow, but what happens? That particular house, it collapses and great is its fall. And we know that will happen so pitifully to the unbeliever who has not established his life and built it up on the Lord Jesus Christ and upon the promise of eternal life. Yes, the winds will blow, but ultimately what will be the future and the result for all eternity? In Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, ladies, verse 1 through 2, there's a beautiful promise there. I want you to... to if you've got a Bible, you can mark your study Bible. Why don't you do it? And this says, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. And each one of them shall be like a hiding place from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land to those who turn to them. So in this, in a prophetical sense, is speaking of one that would come, our King of Kings, Lord Jesus. And how he would be to his people, not only like a great rock, a great rock in a weary land. And this world, let me tell you, is a weary land. It can wear you out. It can be like streams of water in a dry and barren place. It can be shade in the heat of the day, but it says it will be, he will be as a hiding place from the winds and a shelter from the storm. Let me tell you, when the winds start blowing where I live and we get those wind storms, I'm looking for a place to get out of the wind. I need to get in the house or if I have to do something outside, I'm looking for a place where I can be sheltered and protected somewhat from the power and the strength of those winds because sometimes they feel like they're going to push you right on over onto the ground. Here, the word of God is promising, ladies, that when those winds blow so strong and they blow so hard, they're opposed to you, they're, they're your adversary, they're against you, they're trying to stop you. The Lord is going to be for you a shelter from the storm and the wind. In Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4, ladies, quickly turn there with me in the Amplified Version. It warns us to not let the wind stop us. It says, he who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. And so don't let the winds that you're seeing stop you. Don't say, well, I've got to wait till everything's perfect. And then if God wills it, I'll do it. No, because you won't sow your seed and therefore there'll be no crop. There'll be no harvest. There'll be no fruit. You cannot let 
the winds stop. You can't afford it. You know what I encourage you to do? When the winds are blowing so hard against your life, I'd suggest you ride out the storm till your intervention comes. Just ride out the storm. Don't give up. Don't feel that God has abandoned you, for he has not. But I would encourage you to do what the old timers used to speak of when I was a child, and I've learned to do this. When the winds blow, the troubles come, the tribulations are there, and you think, Lord, how are we going to get through this? Where is it all going to end up? Stabilize yourself by taking hold of what I call the horns of the altar, spoken of in the Bible. You know, in Exodus 27, Verse 1 and 2, ladies, we don't have time, but it spoke of about the horns that were to be put, the four on the corners of the altar. And, 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 and in Exodus 29, verse 12, they were instructed as priests that they were to put the blood of the lamb of, and of, of the, the, the animals that were to be slaughtered as sacrifice, put the blood on those horns. That typifies the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us on the cross of Calvary. We need to apply, apply by faith the power of the blood of Jesus Christ to keep us, to protect us, to protect our household and our loved ones. We do in our home what they did in the old time days when I was a kid. We pled the blood. In other words, we cried out for the blood of Jesus Christ to be like over our doorposts and to protect us against the powers of the enemy. So we would take hold of the horns of the altar, how? In prayer, in fasting, in the word of God, and in fellowship with saints and people that will pray for us and agree with us like a network to strengthen us, to support us. I think of how Joab, in the book of 1 Kings, ladies, the second chapter, 28th verse, we won't turn there, but it said how he took hold of the horns of the altar when his life was about to be uh, put to death. Child of God, stabilize yourself by taking hold of the horns of the altar. Remember, you can go to prayer. If you need to, if it's serious enough, maybe you need to do some types of fasting. Go to the Word of God and go where there is support and help of those that will pray and agree with you. I want to share with you a song the Lord gave me to write one day when I was in travail and praying earnestly for a dear loved one who had just had a horrible tragedy hit their family and their beautiful son was killed and they were just heartbroken and it's called tomorrow, tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we can know who holds our tomorrow.
You know, my friends, sometimes when tragic things in particular hit your life, like a tragedy in a loved one, a family member, something, and it's just devastating, you just feel like, well, you wish it was all over for you too. It just, life is too hard to bear. Sometimes people get to that position. I know what that feeling can be. You need to say in your heart, like the song, the Lord gave me there, say, well, you know, we don't know what the tomorrow may hold, but the Lord holds the tomorrow. And so you don't need to dread what's in store. You know, when some bad things happen, you start thinking, well, I wonder what else is going to happen. And you begin to dread what tomorrow might bring. It might be even worse news than what you had today. But the enemy would like you to get caught up in the dread of your tomorrows, just in case something worse happens. We don't need to dread. We need to put our faith in the man of Galilee, Jesus Christ, who walked that troubled sea and is able to calm your storm. Be with us. We're going to share a lesson next time on the east winds of judgment. Amen. Let flowers bloom, O oh Lord, where tears are falling. Copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs, $34. DVDs, $44. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brook song album. Audio cassettes, $10 each. CDs, $14 each. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts, call toll free 1 866 777 4748 or call 1-619-445-0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-592. 4539 or 1-619-401-9389.